<laughs> wow, they really are trying to put out a Zelda game every year, aren't they? We have been hearing rumors of a Link's Awakening remake for a while, but many of them said it was coming to the 3DS, the other home for Nintendo's ports and remakes. It made sense. A remake of a portable game for a portable system. Still works, and at least this one has a life cycle in front of it. I wasn't too sure if I was going to pick it up since it was put out as a full price game, and well, I didn't think it would be justified. Then they said it would have a Zelda Dungeon Maker like section and thought this would justify the full price. We'll get to that later. I'm not exactly sure where the majority of fans sit with the original, but I've heard a decent amount say they love it, and I was enjoying it on my 3DS, but I didn't finish it until after I had beaten the remake for reasons that would be too hard to keep up with. But you know, I just had to play it all the way through so I could see how faithful and updated the Switch version was. The short answer? It does a nice job. Before even starting a file, we're shown an anime cutscene of Link out at sea and his craft getting struck by lightning. He washes up at a place called Koholint Island and is told that the only way to leave this place is to defeat the nightmares here, grab the eight instruments they guard, and awaken the windfish. The story hasn't changed from its original version, but without trying to spoil it, let me just say, I'm not a fan of the plot. When the game first came out, Link was randomly at sea with no reason given unless you look it up somewhere else. Then the Oracle of Ages and Seasons at least tried to give us some continuity by saying Link's Awakening comes after this, but then I think they retconned that in the timeline so the events are reversed, so now it really doesn't make sense. And the ending frustrates me, not because of the twist, but because there's no payoff and because of Link's fate, or what I assume is his fate. In terms of story, it's one of the weakest in the Zelda series, and I wish they could have at least expanded on it and given us a more satisfying ending. They had over 20 years to do so. Metroid Zero Mission gave us an extended ending. Why couldn't this remake? The silver lining are the characters, and the fact that it feels as if the game doesn't take itself too seriously by breaking the fourth wall a couple of times. The game feels a bit self-aware, and not in a way that it feels like it tarnishes the series. It just gives it a light-hearted feel, and I'm more than okay with that. The island of Kohalin was actually kind of impressive for its size back then, and the remake doesn't make it look any smaller, even though it can't be easily explored within an hour or two. Most places will still be locked off until certain conditions and items are met or collected, but I think many of us are used to that setup, and it doesn't hurt that the traditional Zelda formula returns as well. Is there something that helps set it apart from other Zelda titles? Besides it being the first Zelda handheld? The first REAL Zelda handheld? More than I expected, actually. There is the fact that after clearing a dungeon, you'll sometimes have a companion. I promise you, it's not some poorly done, have to hold their hand and hope nobody dares to sneeze on them, escort mission. They don't take any damage or get lost. They're basically interactive shadows, with the exception of the chain chomp that... <laughs> it's a memorable cameo for a reason. Speaking of which, I've never seen so many Nintendo characters in a Zelda game. Cue the obvious joke! And I could go on and on and on, but I'm sure I'll forget a number of them, so I won't even bother. There are sections within the overworld and dungeons that turn it into a platforming side-scroller. It's not a first for the series, but it is certainly much less frustrating than what we've gotten before. They feel like short, but sweet moments. The compass had an extra feature where it gives off a little jingle letting you know that a secret is nearby. Inside the dungeons are these owl statues that will give you a clue if you found its missing beak. Speaking of clues, you can call it Old Man... Ulrira? I think that's how you say it. And he'll give you some advice. Just gonna put this out there. For anyone who complained about the steamboat or the train trying to bring the Zelda games into the modern era, telephone. Never heard anyone complain about that. Just wanted to point out how stupid that all sounds. You'll occasionally come across these two items. The triangle gives double the power and the acorn gives double the defense, both for them to time each. But you can't stack them up, you can only use one or the other. The remake doesn't have the effects of how far they're being launched, but you can feel that impact they take. The DX version gave players the Color Dungeon, which is also present in the Switch version. Clearing it allows you to either do double the damage, or take half the damage permanently. So you definitely don't want to skip it. Now for a little bit of the upgrades to the Switch version. The camera moves with Link in the overworld and in certain parts of the dungeon, instead of just section by section. And apart from some minigames, which I felt were changed for the better, you can get three bottles in the game for storing fairies, but they don't come out automatically. That's what that secret medicine is for. 
more hearts to collect, along with more seashells for hitting goodies, a much better warp system instead of just one location, you can move and aim diagonally, block attacks to leave enemies open to attack, and there's more including the biggest improvement that I'll get to in the next section. At its core, it's still the same journey and story, but now made to be far more convenient, thus more enjoyable, and with a diorama-like visual that will keep it from aging. I hope you're not too attached to the original or the DX version, because you may never go back to them. Not even for nostalgia. You know how people hated switching out the Iron Boots in the Water Temple because of how often he had to do it, and then the 3DS version fixed that? This is kind of like that, but superior in every way, and for the entire game! Before, you only had two buttons for items, which meant you had to switch out a lot. Now, there's a button for the Run Boots. A button for the shield, a button for the sword, a button for the power bracelets. Yes, even those had to be switched out back then. And then you have two buttons where you can use everything else. I personally assigned the Rock's Cape permanently to the X button. Already I find this to be the biggest improvement so far. This is even better than being able to save at any time, which is something I don't take for granted. The original let you save and quit, but here, that is more of an afterthought. Though if you saved inside a dungeon, you'll only start at the beginning of the level no matter where you saved in there, but that's actually normal for the Zelda series. I feel that the map is a lot easier to read than before, and you could even set markers for specific places, like fairy fountains, treasure to come back to, and my personal use, marking where the entrances and exits are in this world, as well as where all the ladders are connected. You'll need that later on to keep the confusion at bay, trust me. The minigames are a bit revamped and I feel that they are better than the old days. I'm almost a master of the crane game. I can farm purple rupees all day, until it wants to scam me in the most obviously rigged way possible. I know I brought up the improved warp system before, but I wanted to remind everyone again, along with the charm, it just really grew on me over my first playthrough. You can tell that they don't try to take it too seriously and had a bit more fun with the story and characters than the usual Zelda titles. And it's okay to have a break from the serious stories every now and then. Oh, and before we move on, I do have to bring this up about the original that's also carried over to the remake. How well it tries to change things up, even for just a little handheld game back then. The characters that follow you, the mini-boss that takes a treasure in one of the dungeons, swimming mechanics, the platforming sections, a number of the puzzles, and hey, I think all the dungeons even have their own music tracks. I feel like they put more into the game than they actually realized. The adventure is a nice one that can get some hours out of you on your first time you play through, and I've gone through the adventure three times, but uh, it isn't that long and there's really not much to do. More hearts and she shells add almost nothing. This was fine on the original, as it had more than enough gameplay than it should have on a portable system, and probably only cost it around $20 to $30 at the time. But $60 for this is something I don't feel is justified. So yeah, my original fear of the game came true. But what about the new Zelda Dungeon Maker? Missed opportunity galore! First of all, you are extremely limited. I can understand some of that, you don't want to make things too overly complicated, and they dumped it down quite a bit so no one can make an impossible dungeon. Plus, it's not its own game, so I didn't expect it to be anywhere near the level of Mario Maker. That said, what it is, is pre-made rooms you connect, and some things that you can unlock and put into the rooms, but that's basically it. You can't decide what treasure chests have what, such as hearts, ammo, map or keys, what music or theme you want it to have, and you can't even upload them for your friends to play or for others to download and vice versa. The only way to give your dungeon to someone else is through amiibo transfers, and I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but it's not. You can't even tell it what stairs to connect to. It's automatic and they'd like to be next to each other instead of allowing me to create shortcuts between long areas. Dompe also has you do multiple creation tasks and they get super repetitive. I forgot how many I had to do to get the third bottle and after that, it's fine to just end your sessions with him there. As far as the dungeons go, well, there's not much you can do with the limitations that the original Game Boy gave it, but Dungeon 6, 7, and 8 made me want to see a doctor to get my blood pressure down. If you didn't hate the block switching crystal puzzles from the other games, prepare to rethink that, especially in Dungeon 6. For 7, make sure you don't do anything until all four pillars are knocked over and pay attention to bombable walls. Once you remember that, <laughs> you shouldn't go insane anymore. As for 8, time, patience, you can control these, and try to mark the stairs that you can't go through yet because you're definitely going to have to come all the way back to that later. <sighs> The bosses are, um, pathetic. 
I don't feel like I'm in danger, except from laughing to death. This one is the only one I actually like, but even then, were these really the best designs for creatures called Nightmares they could come up with? But they were only trying to do what they could with the limited technology of the Game Boy at the time. Yeah, 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 I know how this works. That said, do you think I'm intimidated by a face on the floor? I could just step on its eyes. The last boss at least has the aesthetic look for a nightmare, but I don't know why they didn't try to make the others have that kind of appearance. Dark, smoky, misty, and have, say, maybe a double-headed dragon, a giant snake, a large bat. Heck, you brought this guy back. Why not some of the others? What's just as sad is that they are as pathetic to beat as they are in design. Predictable, basic, sad, with only the final boss actually being a challenge. I think some of them have new attacks from the old days, but it doesn't help them out that much. So you get frustrating dungeons with bosses so easy you can beat them with both hands tied behind your back. Not a fan of that trope. And on one last note for this part, censor bleep you, storekeeper, for selling an item for nearly a thousand rupees when I only need it for maybe two parts of the game. I know you can steal it, but I'm not like that. Plus, I hear you don't want to get on his bad side. Freaking extortioner. It kind of gets harder and harder making reviews when it feels like you're basically saying the same thing that so many others out there are saying, but there's some truth to it. I sadly didn't think this game was worth the full price. Maybe if the dungeon maker had a little more options and we could share them online instead of with amiibos, then yeah, absolutely. Even saying that, I feel like that tarnishes the quality of just how good the remake actually is. Remember my list of favorite remakes? This one would probably be third place. You might play the original to see what history was like, or because my childhood! If you love the original, you'll find more to love with the remake. And for everyone else, it's still a well-made and captivating adventure. Just don't think you're getting the Zelda equivalent of Mario Maker, or that it's as long as, say, any other Zelda title. A 4 out of 5, a couple of flaws, but overall a good game. So let's list off a number of other little details I've noticed. You have to throw the chess pieces into a spot instead of just making sure they stand up. The symbol guys are a lot easier to time your hits to. Hitting this guy with an arrow actually feels more difficult. This mini boss was actually a lot easier to beat. And Marin is way more precious than ever. There's this trading sequence going on that you won't be able to complete right away, but do try to complete it as soon as possible. Not only because it's needed to progress in a few areas, but because after you do and trade in an item, <coughs> you'll get the boomerang, which is kind of broken in this game, but the fun kind is it kills enemies that nothing else will. I've heard that there are some secret scenes with Link and Marin, but I actually haven't looked up how to do them yet. Happy Easter egg hunting! So, is it possible to agree that video game remakes are more exciting and faithful than Hollywood remakes? Please tell me we can.